Hey, I'm Stephanie, and today we're talking about an eyeshadow palette. An eyeshadow palette with an identity complex, because it is masquerading as a luxury handbag. It is the YSL Couture Mini Clutch Palette with High Intensity Pigments, and according to the outer packaging, it claims, and I quote, long wear and comfort. So... All luxury on the outside and all business and comfort on the inside. I thought I would put it to the test, so I took this colorway, which is Casba Spices number 300, and I applied it to my eyes today. And I will be sharing my thoughts about it in the form of application footage, swatches, comparisons, and an all day wear test. As always, I will include timestamps so that you can simply hop, skip, and jump to whatever is most relevant for you. First, we kind of have to talk about the component itself because it is pretty cool. YSL definitely managed to create a very luxury vibe with everything from the textured packaging to the classic logo to even the stitching detail, all imitating YSL's quilted Y style bags. When you open the palette, the same pattern is embossed directly onto all of the powders. And although that is a great little detail, it is something that's only temporary if you plan on using this very often, which I hope to do. But but of course, I messed up that perfect embossing almost immediately because I couldn't resist getting my little phalanges in here to do some swatching. The powders in here are interesting. The formula is definitely a powder formula, but it's very creamy, but also velvety. It's like a velvety marshmallow cream if that makes any sense. And the formula is very different feeling to say um, the cream formula that Tom Ford uses in his palettes or the Natasha Denona cream to powder formula. These feel very different than those. The shiny formula feels a little bit thin and dry, which initially might seem a little bit off-putting, but actually I have a feeling that that thinness is going to be very kind to either textured or maturing eyelids. Its nature seems to be something in between a shimmer and a topper formula. At least in this colorway, Casba Spices, the shimmering shade has a very translucent base, which is something that you would expect from a topper. But the even distribution of a large amount of very sparkly pigment pieces, I don't know what the technical term is, Huh. Sparklies. Well, if the internet says it. The sparklies in there are intense enough that it almost leans towards a more sparkly metallic formula. But like I said, very lightweight. And I think it's actually a very interesting combination. There's something dynamic about it and it can almost give a wet glossy look. Both the matte and the shimmer formulas in this palette swatched incredibly smoothly on the back of my hand. But we all know by now that there can be a world of difference between hand swatches and actual application. So let's talk about how that went. When I first dipped into this palette with a brush, I did get a fair amount of kick up in the pan. Not at a level that bothered me, I did feel like it was within the realm of the normal, but it is something to note. And in my experience, palettes like this tend to enjoy being tickled with a brush instead of being poked. The three matte shadows in this palette blended beautifully with no patchiness or fallout under the eyes, and they looked marvelous on the skin. My first impression is that the quality of the mattes are right up there with some of my favorites like Tom Ford, to Pat McGrath and Viseart. The shimmer shadow is gorgeous and adhered well to the lid, but there was a bit of fallout during application. And probably due to the long wearing nature of this formula, it wasn't the sort of fallout you could simply swipe away with a powder brush. I gave it a quick try, it didn't work, and then I thought, you know what, the only person who's gonna see me today is my auto mechanic. And he honestly doesn't care if I have glitter under my eyes or not. So I ended up just leaving it there. But in the future, if I want to use this glittery shade in a look, then I will definitely do my eye makeup first before doing my foundation. It's been a little over nine hours since I applied this and it has been hot. So how did it wear throughout the day? You tell me, I'll get up close and personal with the camera so that you can get a better look. Other than my lipstick, I haven't touched up my makeup at all since I applied it this morning, so you can see what it looks like in the wild. I did use my Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion because I have oily hooded lids that eat eyeshadow for breakfast, but to be honest, after seeing how hard it was to get those swatches off the back of my hand, maybe I'll live dangerously and next time I apply this, I won't use primer. <gasps> if I take a closer look at it myself right now in the mirror, I... 
I don't know if that's additional glitter fallout or if that's just what was left from this morning. It's hard to tell because I didn't get rid of it. Um, as for the color on my eye, if it faded at all, because to be honest, I don't remember exactly how heavy of an application that I did. If it faded at all, it, it faded completely evenly because it still looks smooth. The blend is still there. I don't see any patchiness or any bald spots. So that looks good. Let's check out the problem area right where my hood meets my lid. There is a little bit less of the shimmer shade there, but it's not completely bald because if I turn my head, I can still see little specks of glitter, even in that spot, which usually is the first one to go. So considering how much I was sweating today, I'm pretty impressed. Before we move on, let's briefly sum up what we already know. I'm gonna look at my notes so I don't forget anything. The shadows feel luxurious, blend beautifully, look smooth and lightweight, have great staying power. They come in an ever so elegant package. So do I think everyone should run out and get this? Uh, no. I mean, look at the color story. How many times has this been done? This must be iteration 16,483. If you own any eyeshadow palettes at all, you already have this color story, probably at least twice over. But if you're looking for a tactile, smooth, luxurious experience, I don't know that it gets much better than this. You do have to take what I say with a grain of salt because this showed up on my doorstep last night and I put it on my eyeballs for the very first time today. So this is all just a first impressions. And if you've been watching my panning for gold series here on my channel where I take cosmetics that have similar claims and I compare them to really find the best of the best makeup, then you already know that sometimes it takes me a good long while to really gather my thoughts about the nuances of a product. So if you'd like for me to come and report back once I have more developed thoughts about this, then let me know in the comments. But we're not done yet because I promised comparisons. And remember when I said that anybody who has a bunch of eyeshadow palettes already has this color story at least twice over? Guilty. But in my defense, my browns and my beiges are my babies. So let's take a look at what I found. The first palette I thought of was Tom Ford's Suspicion. And color-wise, I feel like they could be siblings, but finish-wise, of course, they're just completely different palettes. The next one I thought of was Tom Ford De La Creme. And this one is a little bit more beigey, so it's further away than Suspicion was. Um, so although I feel like they're related palettes, they're definitely not close enough to be considered dupes. Then I thought of my Natasha Denona mini nude palette. And when I saw them in direct comparison, I thought, hey, we've got something here. And then I swatched the nude palette and realized it wasn't really as close as I thought it was. But then <laughs> I thought of my Natasha Denona camel palette and... This one was also not an exact dupe when I swatched them out, but I do feel like if these two palettes had a baby, it would be the YSL uh, Casba Spices palette. So if you already have these two, you can get a very similar look. The next closest one was my Milk Cosmetics Neutral Brown Stack. And color-wise, the, the brown stack is just a little bit cooler than the Casba Spices palette. And to be honest, the quality doesn't hold a candle. And if you saw my most recent eyeshadow palette review, then you already know what's happening with that Milk palette. Now we're starting to get a little bit further away, but I do feel like the Viseart Theory palette in the cashmere colorway kind of had, I feel like they're distant cousins maybe. I feel like there's one and a half shades that are quite related to the Casba Spices palette. But other than that, it's very different. And the last comparison is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension palette. And I do feel like it had a couple of similar shades, but it wasn't in any case a dupe. I don't necessarily feel like you can get the exact same look out of both palettes. And I do feel like the matte formulas, even though they do feel different, they feel like they have something in common, to the touch anyway. However, when swatched out, um, I felt like the YSL was much smoother than the Patrick Ta shadows. So, do you have any of the palettes I just discussed? Are you enjoying them? If so, then maybe I would just continue enjoying them. Because look at this. Brown. 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 All just different shades of dirt. Dirt that we smear on our eyes to feel pretty, and then dirt that we simply wash off again every night because it's dirt, and nobody needs more dirt. But if you're looking for particularly luxurious dirt, then maybe at least consider swatching these in store because they're so soft. 
If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up because that really helps my channel grow. And if you like makeup comparisons and reviews, then maybe you want to consider subscribing because that's what I do here, mostly in the context of Adagio Beauty. And if you want to know more about what that is, then you can click right here to find out. I hope you'll let me know your thoughts about this release, the makeup world in general, life in general in the comments, but even if you don't, have a great week. And let's all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style.